So my, my dad passed away probably 11 years ago, and I went through this with my mom trying to make sure. And he was a financial planner. He was a financial planner. Um, I'm a third-generation financial planner. And and um, in Florida, he's where he passed away, and he had a, you know, he, was, he had a car payment. He had a car loan, and um, it was only under his name, and there's some credit cards only under his name, and those are things that... Welcome to Finding Your Spark After the Loss of a Loved One. Today we have an incredible opportunity to talk about financial independence. Now, this is something that people always want, right? But when you've lost someone close to you, whether it's a parent, a spouse, or even sometimes a child, there can be a huge financial impact. And today we're gonna get to talk about that exact thing Finding Your Financial Independence After the Loss of a Loved One with Matt Ruttenberg. Matt is a financial entrepreneur focusing on financial independence. Matt, it's great to see you today. I'm so glad to connect with you and uh, tell us. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How you doing, Donalyn? Thanks for having me on the Good. show. Good. Thanks. Much appreciated. So I'm really excited to talk about uh, this concept of financial independence. I have to say, uh, I, um, of course, I, you know, who doesn't have the goal of financial independence, but usually it's like a goal kind of like, you know, I'd like to fly around the sun and that sounds right. cool, right? As opposed to like, I'm going to go outside and, you know, uh, sit on the porch. That's like a real goal. Like you could do that, right? <laughs> it's attainable, and, right? Exactly. Yes. And uh, and I love that financial independence is attainable and more and more so, I think, as time goes on. And um, also uh, for me, there were a lot of financial implications when it came to the loss of my husband not long ago. Um, and uh, I... You know, I was raised by a CPA. Like my father was a, a money guy, and so it didn't, it shouldn't have been outside of my realm of, you know, I could do this. <laughs> but still, you're dealing with so many emotions, and you're dealing with so much chaos that, because uh, the whole world just kind of goes up in, you know, what did I say? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And baskets. Yeah, it, um, yeah it's, and it's, so it throws up in the air. Yeah. And so, and there's all sorts of decisions, real decisions to be made. So I'd love to hear uh, your perspective on that and your uh, experience with helping people walk through that. Because I think that um, it's, it's for me, it's even more important. Now it's, it's a goal. Like I'm going to go out and sit on the porch kind of goal, because I feel like I don't really have a lot of choice now, right? There's not two of us. We're not us against the world kind of anymore. It's just, me and i gotta make sure i'm ready <laughs> absolutely so. yeah yeah there, there's so many things going on and i've i've you know past financial planner I, i've i've dealt with my fair share of clients who went through the loss of a loved one and and whether you're handling all the finances yourself or split it's it's oh no now i have all this in front of me and i'm the only one who's going to take care of this and and you have to find a way to separate your you know your emotions from the decisions that you make and just let things settle and make sure that uh, you don't make a drastic decision because of your you're your scared or you're just not sure what to do so it's you have to have this period of getting organized whether you do it yourself you hire a team you know of CPAs and it, it's just this it's a very difficult time because there's things that you just never even thought about you know it's okay where's all my money where's all where, where's all the money? How do I get to that? Um, what happens if I am gone now, <clears throat> especially if you have children who could, who's going to, which the worst decision is who's going to take care of my kids if I can't. And, and, you know, am I properly insured now and understanding your taxes because you, you've maybe pivoted from filing jointly. Now you have to file as a single filer and, and, and then, geez, how do you get to all the cloud-based servers that you didn't even think about? This is a days? really big issue. This is a great right? issue. I'd love to pick up on that because I have to say, um, you know, there was a lot in my mind of like, what's on auto pay and what do I have to yeah. get a checkbook out for and how do I access those things? And um, 
Uh, and so knowing how to get into accounts, making sure that you're like, for me, some of the accounts, my email was not on now. Right. Sometimes that's an advantage, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't it, know it about, I'm no financial, financial person, but I got to say, if, if I were doing it over again, I would make sure the debt was in one person's name and the assets right? were in two people's names. <laughs> yeah. So my, my dad passed away probably 11 years ago. And I went through this with my mom trying to make sure, and he was a financial planner. He was a financial planner. Um, I'm a third generation financial planner. And, and, um, in Florida, he's where he passed away. And he had a, you know, he was, he had a car payment, he had a car loan and, um, it was only under his name and there's some credit cards only under his name. And those are things that my mom did not have to actually pay off. They tried, <laughs> they wanted her to pay him off, but she actually didn't have to legally. So there's a lot of things that that's where, you know, building up a team and I'm by far, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but it, it's, those are things that you have to really consider. And the cloud-based server piece of it, you know, I, gosh, let's say 10 years ago, um, we were all in at least an average of seven databases. I can't imagine how many databases we're in now. And I mean, that, there's software out there now. I think Truebill is one of them um, where they actually can go through your your accounts and say, okay, you have this on auto, this on auto pay, and you can actually turn them off through that software. That's one trick um, that wow. people use. But my wife and I just did that. We just added our, our each other's facial recognition to unlock each other's phone. Because wow. you have so many passwords saved through Apple and whatever, Google or whatever kind of phone you have. So just things like that are things that you just don't think about. And having some place that has your passwords, um, you know, there's software out there that keep keep a hold of all that together. So those are just things that you just... Now, when you talk about uh, you talk about passwords, and when I think back to my father... Uh, cause my father passed away, um, eight years ago and, uh, he got sick. He got really sick maybe two years before that. And we, he was in the hospital and it was just me and him and he had a very high fever and he said, mm -hmm. get a pen and paper. And I was like, okay. And he was like, okay, start writing this down. And he starts telling me his passwords. And I was like, uh, no, we're not doing this. You're coming out of here. And he was like, oh, yeah. no. Uh, this is not a, an emotional story that we're having right now, right? I mean, he didn't have that many words, but that was the yeah. basis of it was like, you do this and then we'll see what happens. Like, maybe I'm coming out. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, And so I start writing down the passwords and I was like, okay, this is really a lot to deal with on yeah. what is potentially, potentially your last day, right? He lived for a couple of years after that. Um, but I will tell you, by the time he died, he had a book <laughs> in the house, <laughs> all written down, <laughs> so that you knew what to do. Yeah. yeah, just having that ahead of time. I mean, because you don't know when that last day is, like you said. So having having that figured out ahead of time is is really important. Again, it's not fun. Obviously, it's not something you actually want to do, but it's a necessary evil, I guess you want to call it that. You have to figure that out. You have to get organized. And, and when, when you are, you know, have gone or already gone through the loss of a loved one, it is absolutely necessary to get organized and, and start thinking once you get past that emotional period of organization, I, I wouldn't do anything beyond organizing, I think, in that first emotional stage. So, um, don't, so I'm going to just interrupt you here because we're talking yeah. about emotions and I know a lot about them. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I just want to say that everybody has a different period uh, of grieving that they go through and a different way of grieving, right? So one of the things that I work with people on, I mean, really my uh, specialty is working with people on finding that spark, right? So even my program is spark, finding spark at home and all of those things. And um so when you're going through it in a way that uh, you've got you've got a way to deal with the emotions in the moment that keeps you in the world where you're still able to to be in the world, maybe not making the best decisions you ever made. Don't get me wrong, but it's a very different thing than the sort of typical uh, becoming a widow and then nobody talks to you for a year about anything, right? Because things can happen in a year. 
<laughs> that you don't right. want to happen, right? <clears throat> so it's important to take a little time, but it's also, I think, really important to attend to that emotional story so that you can start to function more. Um, even just, even just in the last, uh, so I, this is a time of year when I, so last year my husband died and it was a wild ride. It was just everything about it was a wild ride. He got sick. He, he, his body was doing crazy things and I was a big part of that care team. And so, mm -hmm. um, so when he died and then my house sold, <laughs> so it was a really big year. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I didn't, I didn't do a lot of bookkeeping. I just didn't do it. Right. And especially cause it was his thing. And, um, th so now here I am going through those expenses and putting them in QuickBooks and making sure that the business things are in the business area and the personal things are in the personal area and all the things. And, uh, that emotional story is so important because if you don't deal with it the first time around, it comes back around. And even if you do deal with it the first time around, it comes back around. Come back <laughs> it around. just doesn't hurt quite <laughs> as bad. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's a really good advice that you're, that you're talking about in terms of like, yeah, take a little time time to deal with your emotional story but don't don't in my opinion from just from having walked through what I just walked through uh you you can't afford financially to take a year or two or three to go like I don't know where the money is because yeah, out of sight out of mind unfortunately is not the case it's it's still there it's still working behind you unfortunately uh and and bills are need need, need to be paid and taxes need to be paid and things need to be filed and it's get organized. And then, and yeah. then, yeah. And then yeah. it's like, let's, let's get, let's figure this out. Yeah. Let's make some decisions after that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that you're, I mean, I don't know that you actually said this, but I think that, uh, what I get <laughs> from, uh, the way you're speaking about it is that it's not everybody's forte to be organized. So ask no. for help, get somebody Outsource. to help you, hire somebody. Yeah. Right. It's Technology. worth it. It's 2022. Yeah. There's a lot of technology out there to get yourself organized and have it work for you and, and maybe set, try to get that set up before anything might happen. Yeah, and, that's and, right. And, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. When you have a loss that is outside of that inner financial circle, uh, it's a great time to reassess and say, what do I do now? Do you have any, any advice for us about how to, what do you do now? What do you do? Let's say, let's say it's eight years ago. My father died <laughs> and uh, I watched that all happen. And I did say to myself, hmm, you yeah. should think about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> What's going to yeah. happen if anything ever happens to me or my husband? And what, what do you, what do you think of that? Yeah. So, it, so you're asking prior to anything happening. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, right. I mean, everybody needs a will. First of all, everybody needs a will. Everybody, some people need to trust depending on your situation, but a will basically is, is you deciding things prior to, um, uh, passing or something like that. And, and making number, obviously number two is making sure you have the proper insurance to get to that point in case, you know, the number one thing is what happened just, what happens if I pass? That's the mindset you have to put. What happens if I pass away? What are my loved ones left with? What decisions do they have to make? Um, am I a major source of income? Am I uh, the only source of income? And where is, <laughs> where is everything? And do they know how to get to it? Mm. That, that's like the mindset. Mm -hmm. Those are the questions that you have to ask yourself. And if if none of those are answered or some of the questions are answers are no, then just start making those steps. Um, obviously the biggest ones go first and then the little ones, um, you know, even just writing down passwords someplace is better than having nothing um, mm -hmm. or just signing up for some, you know, Google password software or something so they can get to it and just say, this is the one password that you need to get into all the other passwords. Here it is. That, those, yeah. are, those are all yeah. questions that you need to ask. So now uh, I feel like in the olden days, they used to tell us to make sure that there was a certain period of time of living expenses covered. And I got to say, it has been true for me that I um, became very uninterested 
in making a living <laughs> right for a period of time yeah. like i just didn't care i did not care I, the, my concern was something really different right and and it trumped everything right and i think for me anyway i think that's a really good thing i think that having the freedom to do that is important to set yourself up for that and making decisions that sort of support your ability to to do the emotional work to get yourself back to a place where you are not just functional, but you really are set up to to find something great in that yeah. post period, right? Yeah. Um, so is there a time period that you would say, oh, I want to make sure that my spouse has X amount of times worth of income, a year, five years, whatever, so that I know they're okay and can find their footing on their own or? Yeah. There's so many experts out there that talk about how much insurance you need and how much savings you need. And a good rule of thumb, if, if you have a family of four, you, know, you have dependents, you want to try to shoot for six months of of savings. And that's not that's not based based on if you passed away this is they can use this. It's it's an emergency fund. I've lost my job or or something else happens. I need to be able to pay my bills until I get back on my feet. These days um, it could be as simple as I got covid, right? I mean 100%. Yeah, I got laid know? off. It's like you're yeah, out absolutely. for Yeah. For that long, not all jobs can afford to pay you. For that period 100%, 100%. of time. 100 yeah. percent and not relying on um you know unemployment checks and and i i've talked about this before too you know the insurance side of it is there's so many ways you know it's simple number one is pay off the debt because that takes that sucks out a lot of payments you know mortgage car payments um uh, credit cards things like that that's that's easy and then all then then the loved ones pay for their needs so that would be um, you know, groceries and transportation, things like that. Then there's the the 10x mindset, which is kind of like the Dave Ramsey uh, ballpark is 10 times your income is what you should get in life insurance. So that would be, uh, so if you make $50,000, you need 500000 And that's kind of that buffer. It gives you a buffer to um, maybe pay off the debt if you have the debt that you should have um, inside of that income stream. Um, so pay off some debt and then you'll have a, a, a nest egg or, or a buffer to start getting things organized in a few years or something like that. And then there's the, the term uh, financial independence. And financial independence is having enough assets to pay your bills annually, year after year after year after year. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of financial independence. And a good ballpark on that one is whatever your annual bills are times 25. Okay. So if your bills are, I'm just going to, it's, if, if your bills are a hundred thousand dollars a year, that's, which is high, keep it simple. $2.5 million is what you need to have in assets to become financially independent. And do you want to have that amount in life insurance? Absolutely. A lot of people do. Um, do you have to No, because the surviving spouse has an income stream coming in? Maybe you don't need that. Um, so a lot of this, there's so many variables, but those are usually different levels. It's paying off debt, 10 times your income, or if you want them to have pure financial freedom and independence, um, where there's almost no decisions, no drastic emotional decisions have to be made, then then you have that 20 times, 25 times your annual bills, that number. Wow. That is a great way to look at this. I had never heard that at all. And uh, even though I've heard of Dave Ramsey, but I haven't, I yes. haven't, you know, looked into it in a, in a significant way. Um, and so that's a great rule of thumb. Uh, do you feel like there are places where people really go wrong in the planning for like, you know, 90% of the time or 70% of the time, people always get this thing wrong. Is there something that you can oh, kind of yeah. give us about that? In in terms of building towards financial independence, hmm. kind of steering away from the life insurance part of it, it's keeping up with the Joneses is the most toxic mindset anybody can make hmm. when you're trying to build towards financial independence. So uh, living outside your means is basically what that is, is the definition of that. Keep up, you know, my neighbor has a great, nice, you know, great looking car. Um, I feel like I need to prove myself. So I want to buy a great looking car. That is a horrible toxic mindset to have because live within your, live below your means. And that's where 
you know, the, the, the millionaire, the millionaire next door, um, conversation, uh, rich dad, poor dad is wonderful book for this to get your mind wrapped around that being intentional with your money. So don't keep up with it. Don't worry about what your neighbors are doing. Make the decisions that's best for you and worry about yourself. Don't worry about what they're doing. Yeah. I love that you're, you're bringing that up because I feel like, um, this is one of the, the really, uh, visible ways that people don't keep up with their spiritual health, right? So if yes. you're attending <clears throat> to your emotional needs and you're dealing with your spiritual life in a way where you feel wholeness, right? You feel like I'm okay, I'm good. I have what I want, what I need. It isn't necessarily what other people want and need, but it is what I want and I'm living my life in a way that I want to live it. Then if you can tap into all of that, which really takes... Uh, in my experience, a lot of spiritual tools, right? You've got to be able to do a specific amount of work on your spiritual condition, particularly in the, in sort of the Western world, right? Because we have a different way of looking at things. Um, so dep obviously depending on your upbringing and, and all of the tools that you have, at your disposal. But when you do like that thing that you just said, it, like it's, it sounds super easy. Oh, just live below your means. But yeah, I think day to day, easy, it's, it's really God. hard because really is. people aren't satisfied, right? So if you can find that inner satisfaction, if you can say, okay, I'm willing to attend to my emotional condition, my spiritual condition, my mental condition on a daily basis, then it's a whole different ballgame when you're making decisions. Because yeah. you, you don't have to go like, oh, I'm going to Mexico. I should get a translator. You know. <laughs> yeah, money is a money is a tool. Our goals should not be I want to make a million dollars, because that means nothing. That that just does tell that tells you nothing. It's why do you want to make a million dollars? Okay, because I want to live the lifestyle of this. And honestly, the keeping up with the Joneses don't focus on I want to save three hundred dollars a month hmm. by having a car that's less expensive than my neighbor focus on, I want to go on a vacation or I want to do this, or I want to have the financial independence. That's why I want to make money is just the tool and the whole financial independent. This is a global community. This isn't just a definition. It is a global movement and community, if you will. And, and basically like you were mentioning, they're looking at money completely differently than the rest of us. Um, and it's basically being intentional with your money and not going through like what society or, or what the, what we were raised to, you go to school, you get a really good job and you retire somewhere around 65. That's, that's the, that's the life goal that we've all been raised in. And mm -hmm. it's more of not working for your money is letting your money work for you mm -hmm. and let the money be the, the, the vehicle that gets you to what your actual goals are. That is the definition of financial independence. It's very highly money motivated, but the reality is there's a reason behind it. And, and everyone's gone through a different experience, whether it's, you know, you've gone through a divorce or you've lost a loved one, or you simply just are motivated because you aren't educated with money and they, they find this community. And, and honestly, it's Dave Ramsey, you know, we were speaking about Dave Ramsey. He's great for finding the small goals and like getting out of debt don't buy Starbucks or, you know, cut your bills so you can get out of the debt. And the reality is that's just the beginning. And you need to make larger decisions than that to become financially independent, get to those life goals. Getting out of debt is step one. After that, let's get into financial independence. That's a great thing for, for us to talk about. What, what are some of those things that are yeah. beyond the let's get out of debt? Okay. So I've paid off all my credit cards. Maybe I've paid off my house. If that's considered good debt, bad debt. I know people mm -hmm. have a lot of opinions about that <laughs> and I'm not one of them. There's good um, debt, bad debt. I agree. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm, so now I'm in this position where I've got income coming in. This is really the scenario you're talking about, right? There's some sort of income and I'm spending less than I'm making and I don't have a lot of debt. What's, yeah. what's yeah. the big picture here? Yeah. You've gotten yourself out of debt or maybe keep your mortgage. That's, that's what people call good debt, high interest debt, like credit cards. And that's bad debt. Um, you don't want to have that kind of debt, but once you get to that point, 
the big decisions to make to get you to that next level are, you know, geo arbitrage is one really good example. So, you know, and, and, you know, this conversation stems at after the loss of a loved one. And once you've gotten past the emotional, like, uh, I don't want to call it like the point where you're scared, you mm-hmm. don't know where the money's coming from. So I want to downsize my home. Geo arbitrage is where you move to a lower cost of living area, whether it's even inside of your hometown, maybe a lower cost neighborhood or even the town over to be able to lower your payment, uh, your mortgage payment or lower the cost of your house. Because, um, for example, when we were, we were living in Florida before we we moved up here in North Carolina and we moved to this great town. Um, it was, it's a sol- the first solar community in the United States. And we're like, wow, this is great. What's my HOA again? You know, $500 a month. And, and then we, we said that goes to nothing. And so we, within two years, we sold the house and decided this is, this is totally not worth it. Um, we had a big house of like 3000 square foot, which was completely unnecessary because we have, two little girls who don't even want to go upstairs by themselves half the time. So <laughs> why, why do we have this big house? And so then we went RVing and lived in, you know, 250 square foot at, at best, but it, it was, it made us realize like that is, we don't need all that room. So geo arbitrage was to let's lower the payment. Let's downsize. Cause we really don't need this. We like to be outside outside. That's one huge decision. And being able to make that, that decision, without emotion and doing it through logic because I want to save $10,000 a year on my mortgage payment. That's a huge, huge number. 10 years from now, that's a hundred thousand dollars of savings compound interest on top of that. That's just one huge decision you can make. And honestly, a lot of people can make that decision. Yeah. So that's really interesting. I, um, my personal scenario is that, uh, just days after my husband passed away, uh, my house sold and, uh, which it was yeah. already up on the market. We had been yeah, hoping to a- move. Right. So there was all this energy moving toward go someplace. And so the financial concerns of that going someplace that, that meet these other criteria is, is definitely a part of that. I just, mm-hmm. um, I want to I want to kind of add in to what you're Please. talking about in terms of making that decision that uh I think it's really possible to instead of saying I'm going to just make a logical decision to really kind of tap into yourself and say to yourself what do I actually want. Now you have to get quiet to do this, right? You have to be able to hear yourself think in in order to do this. So in the middle of feeling the the lack of your loved one, that's not a great time to think about this, right? Mm-hmm. But if yeah. you meditate or if you do a practice that gets you into a very centered, people call it the zone, sometimes a very centered place, um, then making the decisions can can come with a lot of emotional alignment right? Where it doesn't have to be painful. And I think that's a really big deal because when I was going through that, I was like, I don't know what the answers are. Like, I don't know. We, we were going to go to, we had a dream and we were going to do it, but it's a wee dream. And now my house is sold, huh? <laughs> what what's yeah. next how do i do that right and to allow yourself the space i mean for me personally i literally moved in with my mother right and yeah. uh, I, i'm fortunate that i have family that has an extra room and that they're willing to put up with me and my two cats right for a few months but even if it's not if it's what you said if it's like okay now i'm gonna move someplace temporary but cut my expenses so that I can really do that kind of wound licking that I might need to do, right? Because this is a hard time and bad decisions are easy to make when you don't do that alignment piece first. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And making that decision, it's, it's funny, your situation sounds almost identical to what my mom and dad went through uh, all those years ago. And they, they were selling the house and moving to Florida um, from Ohio for retirement. They were retiring uh, those 10, 11, 12 years ago. So it, they sold it. And, um, then my mom's left in Florida on, you know, we were here, we were in Florida at the time. So that was good, but it was now what, what do we, what do I do now? And is this still the decision that she wanted to make and, and so on and so forth. So that, so that, that's just one way 
to that's just one decision. And 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 honestly, if you want a cup of coffee, have a cup of coffee. I, I, I like Starbucks. I'm going to drink a cup of coffee. It's better than the coffee I make at home. So I'm going to do that. But how do we make more money is another decision. Earned income is the best rate of return that you can make. Just the investments, yeah, 20% if you're on a good year, 7%. But earned income comes from sweat equity, basically. You're not in, you're investing your time and energy into earned income. So maybe you create a side hustle to build that up more and, and be able to shortcut your financial independent goals. And, and again, financial independence, this isn't just about money. It's about figuring out, like you said, what is it that you actually want to do? Uh, spend more time doing the things you love, spend more time with the people you love. And that's what the actual meaning of financial independence is, is giving yourself the time, most valuable asset you can have. I love that. That is so great. Because you're really talking about living by your values, right? When you say, oh, I, I like a, a Starbucks coffee. I love a Starbucks coffee, coffee, but I don't have a Starbucks coffee every day, right? So right. I live. I, I have to make that choice within the context of my larger values, right? And so, mm -hmm. and maybe if I lived someplace where that and that was accessible to me and it was also uh, part of my value system to be like, this is what I'm doing then good, do it, right? But living, yeah. bringing in your value systems, kind of what we were talking about before about not trying to keep up with the Joneses is like really make every decision. I, I'm gonna give you a $14.95 decision, $14.95 of, uh, of a month, right? Yep. My husband had an Audible account. I was like, oh, that's that could be good. So I kept it. And then I didn't use it for six months. Right. Because I don't do that. <laughs> do we actually use Audible? I don't know. A lot of people right. do. Right. Some people do. Yeah. Some people don't. So you have to add like $14.95. It doesn't sound like a lot. I know that just from uh, having been in the business world for a long time before, that there are certain dollar amounts that people will leave on their recurring charges, right? Yeah. So if you can get under that $15 a month, it's likely that people won't. But really taking the time to kind of go through and say, what is my value? What is my my value on my bank statement, on my credit card statement, and then vote for it by taking the two hours to figure out how to cancel it. Right. right. That's that's right, like exactly. a really big vote. I got to say, it takes a lot of energy when you feel like you don't want to, you know, you're in the middle of a loss. It takes a lot ten of bills at, 10, 10 bills at 15 bucks a month is $150 a month and times times 12. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. $180 a month or $1,800 a year. Yeah. In 10 years, it's going to be $18,000, you know, so it's I, times 10, times and also 12, it's, everything. I think even more than adding up. I mean, I do think it adds up, but I'm not a financial <laughs> person, so it's not the first thing I think of. But I don't it count adds it. up in terms of <laughs> energy. Either. It really adds up in terms of energy. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if I leave that there, it's kind of sucking off part of my energy because what you were talking about earlier about money being energy, right? It's just us exchanging this mythical thing that we've given some meaning to. Yeah. And so so it holds the energy and it's our energy. It's our life force, right? Because we spent our life force to go get it. To get to and that. I got yeah. my 50,000 or 100,000 a year, whatever it is that you're earning at this moment. And then uh, now I have it. This is the value of the life force that I gave to someplace else, right? Yeah. So now you got to ask yourself, do I want to give that life force to somebody else, right? Yeah. Is, is yeah, this 100%. how I'm going to spend it? You're giving your energy to somebody else. You're giving yeah. that to somebody else. Um, you're not just, it's just, just cause it's a small amount. doesn't mean it's, it's an inconvenience to stop that. Mm -hmm. But would you hand $15 to anybody on the, on, on the street? Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. So it's it's it, either you keep it or, or they or you're giving it to them. And yeah, and it yeah. takes it takes. And again, if you like it, keep it. If you're an audible kind of person, keep it. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like coffee. Exactly. Coffee. Pay for coffee. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking. I was thinking about how um, you know I think in loss a lot of times people go through this period where it's just like we just like to pull the covers over our head and go like this didn't happen. <laughs> You know, yes. well, and yes. I think that is across the board, right? I mean, there are many types of loss, not just the loss of a spouse, as I've recently gone through, but many mm -hmm. uh, types of loss really fit in that category of like, 
uh, I, I don't want to deal with the world. I want to be outside the world. And I think there's something really important about that in that, um, that kind of separation that we go through where we think that the person's gone because they're not physically here anymore and all of those kinds of things, which I would definitely invite you all to challenge your belief system on that. But um, uh, we could talk about that on another episode. <laughs> um, uh, but I really think that if we um, say to ourselves, I am willing to spend the time with the covers over my head. This is how much time I'm going to spend how long am I going to do? I'm going to do a day. I'm going to do a day a week. I'm going to do a week, whatever that is. And then very slowly and gently talk yourself back into the world, right? Start to be really kind to yourself and find those little moments of not quite joy. Joy might take a little while, but find those moments of peace and allow yourself to sort of sit in them. Then these kinds of decisions about like, what are my values, right? It seems like really far when you've lost a child or you've lost a spouse, or you've lost a parent or even a, a best friend. You know, grandparents can have massive impacts on the way that we live our lives, right? When, we, when there's that feeling of separation. So I love that you're saying like, take the time, figure out what your values are and then do something about it. Because yeah. I think that's the piece people miss sometimes, right? In my yeah. work, a lot of times they get to the first part that we're talking about, but then we don't ever talk about, well, how did that impact your bank account? Like that would be a great conversation to have, right? It's like- Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, big, it's, a, it's hard work. It's hard yeah. work. It's absolutely hard work. You got to push yourself. Well, I so appreciate you taking this time. Now, before we go, I really want people to be able to get in touch with you and, uh, you know, sure. to, to be able to participate with you. I feel like you have such a, an incredible value to bring to the world. And, uh, and certainly Thank our you. listeners should, should uh, tap into that, you know. But before we do that, I want to ask you if you could only give two pieces of advice if everything else went away and you could only say, these are the two things you need to pay attention to in your finances with regard to financial independence, what would that be? Number one is what I said earlier. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Worry about yourself. Don't keep up with the Joneses. That is the worst mistake you can, you can make is keep up, try to keep up with the Joneses. And then, and the second one is take the time to have a conversation with somebody um, do the research. I mean, like I said, this financial independent community is huge. And it's not one person. It's not just one person running the show saying this is what you should do. Although the the book that kind of, I want to say, started this whole thing was um, Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. Great book to kind of get your motivated. But there is so much out there on financial independence. It is a community. And do your research and start learning about it. You know, I just, what did we talk about today was scratching the surface. There's so many things that you can do and so many ways to reach it and so many kinds of financial independence, barista fire, coast fire. Um, and by the way, I don't, I don't think I even mentioned this. FIRE stands for financial independent retire early. The RE is the retire early. I, I don't think you've even brought that up today, but there's so many ways to get there um, and do your research and find your own way. There's not just one path to get there. There's just, there's infinite ways to get there and find it yourself. I love that. I love that, that that is uh, true in the financial world, because I know it absolutely is true in the spiritual, emotional, mental health yeah. world. So yep. um, there's never just one way. I mean, there's all the, all the programs in the world say, this is the way, this is the only way. Right. But in reality, right. there are thousands of ways you can get there and yeah. getting there is what matters. So yes. I love that you've yes. got the focus on the goal. Um, yes. So great. So that's all that matters. Oh, great. That's Super. That matters. Thank you so much. Now, uh, how can we get in touch with you? How can we participate with you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I just started the TikTok thing. So um, I'm at M. Ruttenberg, and I'm talking about all, all things fire. And I'm talking about um, one of my companies is, uh, is um, in the 4 k business and in life insurance business. So um, I talk about all things there, uh, fire and finance. So that's probably the best way you can kind of get started and start learning from that direction. And I'll, I, I talk about a lot of different people and things like that. So 
Well, I am a TikTok junkie, so uh, I will see you there. I I never knew that I was going to like TikTok. I was like, I'm not going to like TikTok. And I don't know how it got on my phone (laughs) or whatever. I was like, I'm not looking at that thing. (laughs) I'm an adult. (laughs) How do you do this again? I'm a grown up. Yeah, exactly. And then I and then I watched like three videos. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I Wait, love that. It? I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> I have it's to bigger say than Google it. now. My I goodness. have to. Yeah. I have to say though, it's like a, you can use anything to help impact your mood and spiritual condition, right? So if you right. use all these algorithms, if you train them, if you only pay attention to the things that you actually like and not the things you don't like and you only hit like and love and comments and all the things right. you only participate with the stuff you really like in the world my feed is like all funny and sweet and right. you know informational i got nothing bad on my feeds so um <laughs> you gotta train it right Agreed. though exactly <laughs> there, are, there have been times when i've been like oh what, what did the president do and then i go right. like oh i screwed up my free ah, there's another one <laughs> i know <laughs> I feel you uh, on that one. <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you, Donalyn. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. <laughs>